shift and just a little bit here this way yeah, because it's just instead of round it looks very oh. straight yeah I like a more no you're fine where you are is perfectly fine Sorry. i don't know who, who's yeah she's introducing the thing because i'm not doing this no it's I'm our video what it's our video so i'm introducing you? yes yeah. it's your, your channel <laughs> <laughs> no but maybe good to what we name. to to you share what we had intro. in mind. Okay, yeah. So we have a lot of discussions about uh, Nella's hair. No, you can leave it there, it's fine. Or oh, you want to fetch more? Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. She needs to warm up her throat. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, her voice is smooth and silky. Um, so we have a lot of discussions about Nella's in Ghana because Kwame is kind of, he really would like to practically plan yes. to go to Nella's. Yeah. Tomorrow, am, tomorrow if we can. I'm in. <laughs> Let's just go. Yes. <laughs> so I'm in camp. Uh, I want Ghana. to stay in Ghana for a while. Yeah. I, I I'm not done playing. Like I like it here. So why should we move right now? We can. You know, I don't see myself growing old in Ghana. But yeah. I I don't want to go now now. And mm -hmm. because you guys are also leaving, and you have a good perspective of, of the Netherlands and of Ghana, we thought we can do like a love hate thing. So what do you love about Ghana? What do you love about Netherlands? But also. What are you not going to miss? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay, well, would you tell somebody like me one. who's in a hurry to leave? Yes, I think yeah. it's very I'm good. I'm not going to introduce this video. I've already done that. Oh, she has already done that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so it started. That's it. Oh, no. Okay. I've been recording all this while. Oh, no, I think it's really good. That's why. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Surprise. Yeah. It's been recording and everything we said is going to go inside. Yeah, it's I'm natural. Not it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to come like, hi. No, we're mm -hmm. done. Okay, so yeah. Good. Okay. That's basically the summary that Elaine has given and she often says that um, she's shy and she doesn't want to do this. You see how she was talking? Very nice. <laughs> but I didn't know the camera was on. I was just talking to my friends. That is, something that is, different. That is usually how I would, trick, I would trick like documentary subjects for example. Mm. Uh, I would usually tell them that, okay, so you, you just, let's just practice, okay? Mm -hmm. You just talk to me. Yeah. They don't know the, the and then it's the on already. Yeah. And then they give me their best take all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, good, thank you. And they're like, but are we starting? No, we're done. Mm, very good. <laughs> yeah. Very smart move. <laughs> so yeah, Kwame wants to go to the Netherlands. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was asking Anne mm -hmm. what uh, what's the what did I ask again? You asked me what what would I miss about Ghana? Yeah. Yeah. What and I said you? that I think I found who I am in Ghana mm -hmm. back. Yeah. So when you become a mom, you, you, you change as a person. So in the Netherlands, being a mom meant that, um, okay, not being a mom. Anyway, when, when you are together in the Netherlands, yeah. it's very structured. You go and buy your house or you rent or you do whatever. And then um, traditionally, or I don't know, it, it just went like that, that Kevin went to work, working nine to five, and then taking into account the time that he comes home basically raising the kids was all on me like he was there in the weekends but he would come home they would have eaten they would have been bathed and then ready for daddy to read them a story it was a routine. but i did everything yeah. and at a certain point i was like wow so this is being a mom that means i'm being in my pajamas 24 7 and then with food on me and then <laughs> all the time when, when, when where's the time for me and because we had so many families around us in the same position I was like, okay, so if they're doing it, I should do it too. But I wasn't really happy. I yeah. felt like, okay, I'm a mom, but but it's, so that's my life now. I don't have any life anymore. And what yeah. am I gonna do? Yeah. But then also, you don't really learn how to let go because my mom was there every Friday taking care of my daughter. But that was like the exception of the rule. Like my mom took off a day to take care of her grandchild. That was like big. But then because she did that day, I didn't want to take another day. And because I had school, like Friday was my study day, but I didn't feel like, when is the time for me and who, who can I bring my child to just have some me time? Yeah. 
So that was something I was really struggling with. Yeah. And when I came to Ghana, um, we had these two girls that we employed, one to help with the household chores and all of that because I had a, um, an, uh, pelvic instability. Pelvic instability because yeah. of my cast birth. It was very difficult. Yeah. So I had to like learn how to walk again. It was a crazy uh, birth. But um, we came with the thought that, okay, we're going to put the kids in school. We're going to learn about the, um, the whole lifestyle and everything here. And then Anna can rest because she doesn't have to do household chores. And that was like, finally, I was like, wow. There's something like rest. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I can sit down. I don't yeah. have to cook. And I felt like, oh my God, oh, this, yeah. is, this is life. Yeah. So it was a little bit of a struggle in the beginning, like letting them bathe, Sophie and Micah, making sure they are ready for bed. And I was like, I don't want anybody to touch my kids. But gradually I learned that, oh, when somebody does it, they might also be very happy. And I can take some time for myself. And then I'll be much more happy to read them a story yeah. instead of later. Come, let me read this story so you sleep. So it was like, oh, wow. Really <laughs> yeah, it became like a chore for it you. It became like a chore. Wow. It wasn't love. Yeah. It's just like, oh my God, the story. Again. But yes. then it was like, oh, you're ready for bed? Come, let me read you a yeah. story. Because so, you have so much I, space yes, mentally now. I was much more happy. Oh. And like physically as well, the household chores, not having to think about what I'm going to eat the next day. And I finally found myself back like, okay, I'm Anna as well. I'm not only a mom. Yeah. So I think that is the, the, the number one thing I'm going to miss is that freedom. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm gonna come, do, can I do a follow-up question? Sure. Um, with all the things that you've learned here mm -hmm. and how the routine changed and how you found yourself and fell in love with yourself again. Yeah. How, what, what are you gonna take from here to try and you know, replicate it now that you're going back? I think that I will make more time for myself yeah. and not be like the perfect mom. If my kids want to wear the same t-shirt, go and wear it. I'm not dressing you anymore. You can do it yourself yeah. now. I think that also helps they are at the bigger age now. So Mike and Sophie learned how to dress themselves eventually because I told the, um, the girl that was helping, like basically she wanted to do everything for them. But yeah. I said, no, you can help them to learn how to do it but I need you to teach them instead of doing it for them. Yeah. So they really learned how to dress because it was in a fun way and they were happy. So now they're at the age that they can dress, they can shower, they can do everything by themselves. So I'm gonna keep that. Like, no, yeah. I'm not doing it for you. You go and do it yourself. And it's also easier because now they can also do it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, guess, I guess it's been a win-win then. Yeah, very. And what, what about you? Um, I learned to be patient. With a lot of things, because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> that that's what God uh, does with you. Um, I'm more of a person who likes to get things done. Um, um, I like process, I like creating process for things. And coming to Ghana, there's no process. There's, yeah. there's a lot of chaos. And I don't mind chaos, but you have to make your chaos to your, like, your own environment and then create structure in it. And doing that in Ghana, um, learn me to do it in a way that you take more time for things instead of um, wanting to rush into things yeah. just take your time in uh, doing things and be satisfied at the pace in which things are going um, at the beginning it was very frustrating especially when you want things to be done yeah. because you're settling down in the country um, and that was very difficult in the, in the beginning uh, but then during the whole process in uh, living in Ghana, adapting to the lifestyle here, um, it changed my mind uh, and my mindset uh, towards um, getting things done here. Um, so definitely that mentality, I'll take that back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'll use that uh, during my whole life. Um, that's, that's, I think, one of the key things. They're going to uh, take back. Yeah, because it makes you like, it, patience is every, it's in any, uh, a facet of life, it's it's helping. Yeah, I it, I recognize a lot <laughs> because I really like to tick off my to dos. Yeah, you know it's so satisfying to do mm -hmm. like oh I've done this, I've done this, I've done yeah. this. I but what I kind of developed and it sounds mm -hmm. pretty crazy is that I say like oh my Dutch brain is on now. Mm -hmm. I feel like my brain has like now two parts. So sometimes I really set in my ways the Dutch way. And then I have a day planned, like do this, do this, da, 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 going from this side of town to this side of town. In Nellis, you can do that, yes, mm -hmm. on your bike. You just go, <laughs> no worries. But here in Accra, traffic, all these unexpected yeah. things. 
So like, oh, I put my Dutch brain on today. <laughs> I should just, you know, and then I go more into the flow of Ghana. And then what you say, like, you focus more on the process, like focus on the pace. Mm -hmm. You won't tick off the to do today, but you will get there at some point. You'll get there. Yeah, it's it's really, week. <laughs> yeah, within a week or two. <laughs> or there's something else popping up that you didn't think of yet. So you're like, mm -hmm. oh, that takes me like three steps back. But the patience, yeah, it's really, you have to. Yeah. Even if you're an impatient person, then you will give up at some point. Yeah. yeah. So you really either, have either to. Either it will break you or you just learn how to move with it and go with the flow. Yeah. That's, I think that's one of the things that really uh, makes a difference for people to live in Ghana. Because a lot of people come to Ghana and within three months, six months, they're gone. Yeah. They hate it because they ju just don't um, put themselves in a position to adapt to the lifestyle yeah. or to um, uh, let themselves change their, their, their habits oh, their ways, way, yeah. and yeah. the ways. So that's, that's, that's a big key in making something successful or um, making something durable for you. Yeah, I think Ghana's not for everybody. See, there's a lot of people now. We have this like um, this uh, consultation business that we have now, where yeah. families contact us and we help them. But there's a lot of people who actually have never, never ever been to Ghana or any mm. African continent. So you tell people? They say that oh, because of your videos, we're moving. I said don't, don't. No. You can come, but make sure you have a plan yeah, B. Yeah, you need a yeah. plan. But because Ghana's not for everybody, and I think a lot of people really underestimate that. Mm -hmm. Really underestimate. But while I'm very happy that you you think that because of videos you can move to your country, I think it's a great thing and you should try. Mm -hmm. But Ghana is like whoa, it's not for everybody. Yeah, definitely not. No. So you, do you think that with with um, what you portrayed, for example, on your channel, yeah. it, it was a clear picture enough? Because I, I like the fact that my I think my favorite episode I've watched was about the school. Okay. Yeah, yeah. the school system and everything. Mm. I like the fact that you were showing what's good and what was frustrating you as well. Yeah. Yeah, because not a lot of people see that side mm. and they think that everything is yeah. Well, but you have to be real about things. I mean, yeah. of course, I think videos from every country, most people will just um, emphasize the best things. But then it doesn't give you a real picture of how things really are in a country. And yeah. um, maybe that's the Dutch part in, in, of, in us. Uh, that's like very down to earth. In our communication, well. and straightforward and direct. And uh, we feel like that helps people a lot in um, getting an image or getting an idea of how life is here and how life can be and how life is for certain groups uh, of people here in Ghana yeah. because there are different layers uh, yeah. Yeah, in, in Ghana there's a, there's a huge gap between like poor and like rich that's, that's it's massive very yeah. big yeah. 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 yeah no I always tell people that social media is not real mm -hmm. that is something that I always try to emphasize and we do make videos where we try to keep it very real and raw like the way we feel we express it and that is like our Dutch side we don't sugarcoat yeah, stuff we just true. say yeah, it as it is, it is. Yeah. but <clears throat> I think a lot of people still think that um, because we're living quite of a happy life here that everything is okay but there's a lot of things that you don't see mm -hmm. because when I'm stressed I don't want to take the camera I yeah. take the camera when I feel happy so that is the side that you see on our vlogs and yeah. Especially in the beginning, we we were really in this like romantic type of phase because oh my god, we're doing this, we're doing that. But there's a lot of parts that are just not on camera because we're stressed then. And I think now I'm I'm a little bit more realistic because I feel so much um, uh, responsibility of people that are actually moving because of our video so I try to keep it real yeah. and a lot of people don't like the fact that I'm real don't like the fact that I show maybe garbage or show my frustration in traffic or all of that but that is also part of the process when you're in Ghana for a vacation Ghana is so nice and so beautiful yeah. but when you're here for a longer period there are things that that really get to you and eat to yeah. you and I don't think it's everybody that can handle that yeah well, well it's one of those I feel like it's becoming an interview <laughs> I hate that you can, like, I so maybe asking. we can ask you. So what are yeah. what are some things that you drain you in Ghana? Yeah, like you can relate. Yeah, you you, well, you, you want, want to go. You're eager to leave. Yeah. Oh. So, okay, so bring I, it to I, I, Yeah, I'm eager to leave because like um, 
like you're saying, I think that it's, it's, it's more with the structure mm -hmm. and process. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't grow up knowing it and you would think that for the 33 years or whatever, what, how many years I've been here, I would get used to it. Mm -hmm. But I still can't but get used don't. to it. No. Wow. no, I can't get used to it. I don't know why my brain can't get so used to it. So where did that structure come from? Because we, we are brought up in structure, right? This yeah. is what we know from baby. You go to crash. Yes. <laughs> Even that structure. I think, I think, I think, I think it's more, it's, it's not about uh, external structure. Mentally, I just uh, know that I want this and I want it done in a certain way. I'm a perfectionist. I know mm. what I want, what I like, how I want it. And when you also are open to other things by virtue of the fact that the world is a global, like, you know, uh, village now, you mm -hmm. see things and you're like, wait, the way I feel, I'm not, I'm not crazy for mm -hmm. wanting things to be structured mm -hmm. yeah. because other places are doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So did you feel weird so when awesome. you were growing up? Like maybe for some things, for, yeah, for some things, because for some things when, for example, you have to meet people and time, time yeah. is one of the things that I cannot like, I show up on, on time, time before her. Yeah, he's always earlier than me. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, and if I give him enemy. one, and then like 10 minutes later, he's not happy. Oh, wow. I, I, I can't turn it off. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Like, personally, I don't care who you are. If I show up at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. and you tell me it's 2, I'll be there at 2 or even 1.45. Maybe I don't know the place. Mm -hmm. And so I've already adapted to the system. Mm -hmm. But I still don't like the consequences of my adaptation. So what happens if I come and treat? I say, oh, come with it. The traffic, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll, you see, it, I, I can't hide it either. <laughs> I'm also uh, Dutch in that sense, yeah. because you see <laughs> from my face that I'm frustrated. I'm not going to entertain your coming at three and say, oh, but it's okay. Yeah. The worst you don't want to say is, mm -hmm. oh, but it's it's not a big deal. No, mm -hmm. no, don't say that. Mm. Yeah. No. So for me, but I think it's good. Yeah, I think you when, should always say it and always explain why you feel agitated, yeah. mm -hmm. because. The concept of time, I think a lot of Ghanaians just don't value it. And there are certain moments where you just need to value that. Of course, when we're just hanging out, it doesn't really matter if you're an hour late. Yeah. But if we have a business meeting, yeah. I have other stuff to do. do. And, and, and you need to be And time is money too. Yeah. Yes. Because once yeah. you're waiting, you could have done something else. Exactly. And you know, earn money with that or anything. Yeah. And yeah. now I'm waiting for you, wasting my time. Exactly. But but even just when, tell even me when we're hanging doing. out, I still think you should respect people. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> so if we're hanging out and we're going to spend let, let's just say we, we decided to meet at 4 p.m. and I feel like from 4 to 8, I like you to the point where we, I would like our company to like extend to that point. Mm. But if you show up at 7, mm. I'm angry because I can only spend one hour with you now. Yeah, Where's sure. the fun in that? Mm. I get that. Yeah, yeah. so I, I just can't turn it off. So when I went to the Netherlands, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is it. This is where I'm supposed to be. Like, train is on time. Everybody is like, you know, as soon as you make an appointment with somebody, immediately they pull out their planner and mm -hmm. they're just putting it down like... <laughs> this is hey, this a new world! Yeah. <laughs> I think you adapt quickly then. If you like that concept, you can really adapt quickly. My second time I was there, I, I really started feeling it. I was there for longer. Mm -hmm. Started feeling it, I know that I can easily live here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Easily. Yeah, so that's, that's the, the reason why I would... I mean, I've not lived again. Like you were saying, mm -hmm. holiday is different from living. Yeah. yeah. So I guess other parts I have not experienced the points mm -hmm. where I'm like, nah, I want to go back. Mm. So maybe in time, mm -hmm. when They'll I do go. experience it, I will gauge whether the structure is good enough for me to want to push on and you know try and suppress the other parts which are not very fun. Yeah. Okay. So let me tell you something about that. Yeah. The structure in the Netherlands. Okay, I work for. Um, Okay, I'm not finished school yet, but I did internship for a company where um, we basically take responsibility of children in the Netherlands. Yeah. So it's like child protective services. Um, the structure in the Netherlands is so big that I could not bring Sophia and Micah here without letting government know where they are, which school they are enrolled in, and how long exactly are we staying in Ghana. Mm. So for the first year, Sophia and Micah were okay. I had to sub submit documents that we're leaving Ghana with permission of their dad, mm -hmm. with written, everything needs to be in paper yeah. because I'm taking two Dutch kids. It's okay if you go, but our kids, they need to be in school. So they gave us a time frame to make sure that we have a school here in Ghana. 
the school had to have certain type of rules and all of that. And I was a bit like, oh, this is serious, man. Yeah. You can't just take my kid. Well, this is, it's my kid. I've bred them. You're coming to tell me that yeah. this. So there's a lot of structure that comes with that. When we, when we said that we want to stay longer, we had to deregister from the country mm -hmm. because you can't take your kids outside of Ghana longer than a year. That's when you have a system where there's a lot of rules, a lot of yeah. rules. in place. Yeah. And the rules are there to, uh, like a safety net, it, which is good, but then sometimes it's, it's too rigid. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think we've experienced the process, I mean, with visa applications. Yeah. Like it's crazy what we have to hand in for him yeah. to come to Netherlands. Yeah. 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 Like it's yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're trying to get our Ghanaian marriage legalized in the Netherlands. And that's also like a hey. different yeah. ballgame. It takes comes, two that years. Comes from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It comes from a place where um, back, my dad back in the just days, brought all of his brothers come, yeah, come to it, it came from somewhere because it was very easy back in the days. Yeah. But because it was easy, people abused it. Yeah. 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 It's people from Africa, it's people from Asia, it's people from all over the world yeah. Yeah. who saw an opportunity there and yeah. came. And of course, if there's an opportunity, take it. Yeah. Yeah. But then because of the over abuse, yeah. things are like, got you see, tight. All my uncles have mixed race kids. They have Ghanaian kids too, but they all have at least one mixed race kid. Mm. Just for the papers, right? Like, yeah. There was an extra kid. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> if, if the kid yeah. comes along, oh, that's nah, Not all of them, but majority. Yeah. yeah. Well, all of my uncles have, Let, except yeah. for, okay, I can't say the name, but one. Yeah, yeah, like you can't mention the name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that is also a thing. Yeah. And being mixed race, I don't know if you're ever going to think about having kids, but it's very difficult. In the Netherlands, I feel, yeah. But, but, but I think it's everywhere difficult because you feel like you, you don't belong there. Worlds. You don't belong yeah, there. You don't belong from here. Both worlds, yeah. I feel that mixed race kids who are grown up in Ghana are very much more mentally okay than mixed race kids who grow up in Europe or anywhere else. I'm not sure. She would like to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> so I, I have I have this like principle that again mm -hmm. with the the prime reason you're leaving with this education system not yeah. working for and you're looking out yeah. for the kids and you yeah. want them to have the best. Yeah. I was thinking that for what we get here in terms of the school system, mm -hmm. either super private or in between or public, mm -hmm. it's not worth it's not worth what you're paying for. No, yeah. definitely not. Yeah, totally. You can't take any kid who is exposed to European or any type of other and culture to public school. That is just out of the mm. equation. Yeah. Maybe you can take them in like, so an in between, little, in between or an extreme or yeah. high, high yeah. end. Yeah. yeah. But like the, the amount of money that you pay for school when you know that it's free in the Netherlands, it's just very difficult. Yeah, that, that, that too is very difficult. Yeah. yeah, and the quality in Netherlands is good too. Yeah. And you very don't good. really yeah. pay for it. Like, no. and there are small things, but it's yeah. not like yeah. as much. But, and you don't you stress made, about like, the things. Um, I, there's, there are a couple friends of us here in Ghana who enroll their kids in the, the best school there is uh, in, in Ghana, which is stated by the majority before was Lincoln. Mm -hmm. They're saying it's not worth it. They're paying like almost up until thirty thousand yeah, dollars a year. Yeah, a year. year. Yeah. It's like per it's child. Like, per child. And per child. child. Yeah, and crazy, they're saying right? it's 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 not the best, but hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. We can afford it, but if there was another country where we could put our kids and put our business directly, we would do it. No, yeah. no, no. That friends. It's paid for by their company, yeah. and that is why no, but some, paying them some out of, of them the own pocket, own that is another, yeah. yeah. No, but some of them have their own business, they are very successful. But they and say that they don't have another choice because they feel like education-wise, Lincoln is the best. No, the, the mm -hmm. thing is, uh, the reason most people choose for that school, most business people who are starting a business here in Ghana choose for that school, is your, um, bring your kids into a network. Because that is also one of course thing. there are a lot of experts yeah. from a, from a company with their kids there, but then there are also very successful business owners there, yeah. like high top yeah. business owners, which you're you're buying yourself into a network, yeah. and especially if you're starting somewhere something here, uh, uh, which is going to have a huge impact, it's a smart move. Yeah. But then again, it costs you a lot, and do, are you willing to pay that amount for the education you're getting? Because people 
complain about every school in yeah. every layer. Yeah. But then paying a lot and then still complain, that's something that's... You don't difficult. want. Yeah. yeah. If, yeah. You, if you check the balance, it doesn't work. Mentally yeah. in my head, so... Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so if I can advise you, I would say from zero to five years old, the best place to be is Ghana for any child. And then growing up... No, don't say that! <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, like, yeah. even having just somebody in the house to help you with the daily chores yeah, when you get there's hurt, a lot of help. It is yeah. not it possible. Big, big, in big, Netherlands, it's difference. seven days that somebody comes to help you. After that seven days, you're by yourself. Yeah. And of course, you can have family, but because of these rules and structures, you're going to plan, okay, next week, Friday, Kevin's mom can babysit the kids and we can go for a dinner date. But then only between this and that time, because if you're coming, coming too late, no, no, I need my nap because the next day, you see? Yeah. So we can go for a dinner day until 10. The but flexibility. 10, we have it's to that, be yeah, quick that, home very bad. Yeah, it's yeah, that flexibility quick, that yeah. makes it difficult. Yeah. yeah. You can't really live. Yeah. You can, but to a certain... It has its limitations. To a certain length, yeah. It has only till this is very nice. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. And I think Amsterdam, you won't really face a lot of like racism and all of that. Because racism is still real in the par outer parts of the Netherlands. But Amsterdam, Rotterdam, big cities is okay. But I think as for kids, Ghana would be a very good way to start. Just the help around having a child. and Because a child is not only your child here. It's for community. Yeah, that's for the yeah. community. And in yeah. Holland, it is your child. Mm. Yeah. Your, your child. Yeah, and the government looks over, are you doing it okay? Yeah. If you miss two days of school, there's going to be a call from the teacher, why is your kid not in school today? Okay, my child is still feeling sick. I'd like to see a doctor's report. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's serious. And then if you, if, if you don't, can't submit that doctor's report, there's going to be a phone call to an organization like mine. I will come to your house to see yeah. like, where is your kid? Why is your kid not in school? Your child needs to be enrolled. We look at the situation. We see what's going on. If there's something going on that's not okay, we have the power to place your kids yeah. outside of the home until you fix that situation and we feel that your child is safe enough to be back home again. Mm -hmm. So that's something to yeah, do. Yeah, to talk about. And Serious things. Yeah, <laughs> you said that you feel the mixed rates mixed race kids in who grew up in Ghana are yeah. more mentally stable yes. than the other way, like if they grew up in Netherlands. Yeah. What makes you say that? I'm just curious. Um, I think a big factor is that. So that, you have a big role on you. You too? <laughs> <laughs> I see two, okay, let's keep it a mixed race kids in the Netherlands, right? Yeah. Who grew up with a Ghanaian mom don't have that really. They're oh. okay because they're really taught about the culture. Mm -hmm. They're taught to speak the language. They know how to cook. They really come to Ghana maybe I think almost every summer. Mm -hmm. You don't have any choice. While our dads, they were not really that involved in our life. They just feel like they're with their white mom. It's okay, let the mom take care of them. And I would go to my dad on weekends, but I, I'll eat food, but I will never expose to the language. I'll come to Ghana almost every summer, but I was very secluded and not really made to go out and be free so i didn't really know who yeah. i was mm. and when you're in the netherlands the family that i know was my dutch family but i don't look like them yeah. i don't behave like them i don't act like them so i always felt a little bit weirded out mm. and that is why i say that if if you grow up in ghana you feel and you know who you are and then you go to the netherlands i think you're mentally stable and more equipped to deal with racism or yeah. thoughts or you're more grounded mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay. but i think that's also more more apart as you just explained i feel like you're saying the moms are more involved in upbringing the child than the dads in mixed race kids yeah. most of the time that isn't is the it, case uh, yeah. isn't it a generational thing though maybe maybe i also. think it's a generational thing i don't think we can um generalize Yes, we have the experience, especially the fact that, yes, you grew up mixed race and that's what you experienced. But mm -hmm. now with what we know and where we're going mm -hmm. and how present you both are in the lives of your kids, mm -hmm. I think they will have a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I think it's a generational thing. But when we go back and we go back to work, mm -hmm. the structure of the Netherlands doesn't allow the dad to be at home a yeah. lot of the times because you work. Yeah, because of the rigid structure of yeah. work days yeah. and all these things. And you can get that day off. That's like a, a day you can get off, you, get, you still get 70% paid, yeah, okay. but that is like only a day. But it also depends on what you do now. True, very true. 
Cause but like the normal example, nine to five yeah, structure. For example, okay. um, I quit my job because strategically, as, as we started dating and we're thinking about the possibilities of either we're staying here or there or not or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I started a career in like voice acting and film mm -hmm. because then it's my own career and I can do it freelance. I can get called as a cinematographer to go and do something. But in between that time, mm -hmm. I'm home. You're free, yeah. Yeah. You're free to I, have, I have my studio in the house. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be present in the studio to record a, a voiceover. I can still earn while I'm still home. Yeah. So I think the world is changing. Careers are changing. Yeah. My yeah. career, for example, doesn't require me to be present somewhere nine to five. Yeah, yeah. Granted, maybe if we do relocate, I may have to consider working for an organization, even if it's a production organization, for a while to learn the system before I jump back out into yeah. freelance. Mm -hmm. Maybe that time will be a very difficult time. Mm -hmm. But to then, manage, yeah. yeah, to manage. But then, ultimately, me mentally, mm -hmm. I don't see myself committing to uh, a corporate environment for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. And I feel that what I do know now and how I'm doing it, I can exist anywhere with my craft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is very. Good. If I go to the Netherlands, I'm a filmmaker. Am I yeah. a good enough filmmaker? Mm -hmm. If I'm not, I need to improve myself to mm -hmm. the point where I can get clients and work, or even create my own work for myself mm. yeah so i think with that i don't have to be out all the time yeah yeah, that yeah. but that's uh, like a, an exception yeah yeah that's to what's normal uh, but, but i think covid would change yeah, also a lot of positive, positive things mm. I but i think also one thing eh, what we are taking back to the netherlands you see in the netherlands is so structured that any business you think of you're gonna have 10 competitors yeah, so i don't personally know a lot of entrepreneurs well, when I came to Ghana, any business you think of, maybe you'll be the first one to start. So yeah. there's a lot of entrepreneurial things going on around us. Sure. Yeah. But in the Netherlands, this is different. Mm. So I think that might also play a role in why the structure of nine to five is so evident because it's everywhere around us. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the, um, the schools here are, as we discussed in the earlier videos, schools here are, are people following the school here are meant to follow yeah certain way of life and then the moment you finish school you're confronted with life because it's the opposite there's no job so you have to create something for yourself mm -hmm. and in holland or in the netherlands it's you get assimilated you get, into the system yeah, yeah. there's a system yeah. so when you graduate well there's a job and there's yeah. another job and there's another job yeah. so yeah. by all means you, get you a get job and if you want to create something you. for yourself later on you can do that. you can do it you can find uh, documentation about how to do it you can yeah. follow lectures there's a lot of assistance so um that's where but do you feel that is like encouraged to be an entrepreneur i feel like it's um, discouraged yeah, to be an entrepreneur in the, the netherlands way. it's yeah. yeah it's not encouraged yeah no. and, and, because and, there's and, so and, many and taxes and things you have to look into before you can register and there are so many also competitors. Like I can't think of something that you can do in the Netherlands which is not already yeah. there. And yeah. people actually do it very well. So why would you, who doesn't have any background in knowledge, like let's say I want to want to open up an ice cream parlor, right? I think in Ghana I could do very well. But in the Netherlands, oh my God, You're there's so yeah. many yeah. ice cream yeah. parlors. Yeah. You, have to, you have to be exceptional. That's the yeah. thing. In the saturated market, you have to be exceptional. Yeah. While here, the the market is not. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're going to be exceptional you. directly because you bring knowledge and, 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 and a base of, of level of service from the outside, yeah. which, which makes you exceptional compared to the local competitors. Yeah. yeah. While in Holland, that's totally not the case. You really have to be different. Yeah. yeah. And like different, so, different so than the 500 people who do yeah, the same so thing. So it's more like being in the Netherlands, you're just Dutch, but being in Ghana and for you, you are both Dutch and Ghanaian, yeah. so you're bringing both worlds, yeah. which automatically makes you different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to yeah. start a business, yeah. automatically yeah. makes you different. Yeah. But I do think that honestly, the structure in Netherlands, it's nice. Yes, we all enjoy it, but it also makes people play safe a little bit more. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you True. will do more what is like kind of expected of you because. Yeah. If you go off the beaten track, what we do here in Ghana all the time, I mean, mm -hmm. suddenly you're doing YouTube full time, like it's suddenly a career. Mm -hmm. Like in, in Netherlands, people would have yeah, said, Netherlands, oh, yeah. why, why are you doing that? Yeah. It will not work. Like yeah. 
just stick to your nine to five. Yeah. You know, you yeah. have a good job. Why would you risk all mm -hmm. that? People play safe. Yeah. While here in Ghana, there's more at stake. Yeah. yeah. Like you have to move. We yeah. have to hustle. You have to try. Yeah. Which is also tiring. So there's another side. But mm -hmm. at least people are very creative, very innovative. Yeah. Like they think so much out of the box. Yeah. And I'm sometimes like, oh, is that possible? Mm. Like, and then I'm also thinking, oh, I'm also going to start a popcorn stand mm -hmm. for events. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I, I would yeah. never, yeah. never, never think of but that. But you get so creative. Yeah, yeah because you get inspired by yeah. all these people do, yeah. just doing things for the sake of trying and seeing yeah. if it works. And if it doesn't work, well, then we'll, we'll find something, something else. else. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then it's, that's kind of taken out of, because the system is there, so it's like your safety net. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll be fine. I'll just stay in this job. It's not what I want to do, but... At yeah. least it pays the bills. Yeah. It pays the bills. Exactly. Yeah. And in the weekend, I'll just drink a little bit more to forget <laughs> about my nice job. <laughs> yeah, Kevin was that, right? Like, what, what comments did you get? Because we, we, Kevin quit his job to come to Ghana. Mm -hmm. And there, like, nobody in our environment has ever done something like that. Just quit your job and move somewhere. Yeah. So I mean, everybody I'm, told us we're crazy. Yeah, but I'm, I'm comfortable in trying things. Um, no, I feel, but what kind? I think a lot of people also try to discourage you, right? Yeah, or I don't move. listen to people. People. Yeah, but yeah. what were the sort of comments? Because we're trying to explain, like, well, the is, it, is it wise to do that? What of what about what about your house? What about uh, the monthly fees? I mean, yeah, those things they're there, and I'll fix a way to make sure I can maintain all those things. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like um, you have to enable yourself to try things in order to learn new things. Mm -hmm. Always being in your comfort zone. That's I, d I don't think that's satisfying. I mean, it's satisfying in a way, but then. It gets bored. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're doing the same thing, like for instance, I think I said that a couple of times at the beginning when we left. Um, if I would stay in Holland and do the same thing for a whole year compared to being in Ghana for a whole year, in which case will I learn and benefit more? Of course, going to Ghana and doing something totally out of my comfort zone, right? So, based on that and based on the decisions earlier, I feel like always try to do something new, mm. try to learn, try to struggle because the moment you struggle with things, it's the moment you learn the most. Yeah. If things are very easy and very accessible for you, you won't really learn a lot. You will just adapt to it and that's it. That's, it's satisfying, it's comfy, but you won't gain much. The moment you struggle, the moment you fail, that's the thing I like uh, um, from uh, entrepreneurial mind uh, set. Failing is learning. Failing is getting better in life, understanding more and being able to teach what you've learned to others. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like the thing we, we, we did for our kids, um, trying to do something very different, walking the opposite uh, road uh, uh, from our dads and trying to bring that to our children just for them to learn about heritage that that helps that inspires hopefully them i'm not sure but hopefully it inspires them later yeah. on in life to have a different mindset about the whole process and the whole, yeah. the, whole, the whole the whole the whole structure they have to follow going through school yeah even now COVID, like a lot of COVID can be experienced as a bad way but then i'm experiencing it in, in in a way that okay of course if you get sick it's very bad <laughs> but yeah. it's it brings you down to earth mm -hmm. and it really brings you to a mindset that am I doing things in a correct way or can I do things in a different way? The traditional way, is it still the way that's going to maintain my life for the next couple, 10, 30 years? Especially no. when anything can happen. Yeah. 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 Even when I was working for a company like um, uh, the first company, the first big company I've worked for, uh, the moment they cancelled the brands, um, Everybody in my, in my, in all the other managers were like in panic, like, oh, shit, I'm gonna lose my job and everything. I'm like, no, that's cool. I have to apply <laughs> again for a job. Uh, I can do something totally different. I was like, really, looking I, I, I really, to the I change, was really yeah. looking forward to it. Of course, I have my monthly fees, but hey, that's. But I think that is also a luxury yourself. from the Netherlands because whatever if happens. If you were in Ghana and that happened to you and with, yeah. you were comfortable with earning every month mm -hmm. and. Covid happened, and you're like, you're really you need a different place. Yeah, yeah. So that that's that 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 puts you in a in a, in a, in a mindset that don't always be comfortable with what you have. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying everybody has to be prepared for the worst, but put yourself in a mindset that um, always strive for something more, but then also make sure there's a safety net for yourself. 
um, and especially in a country like Ghana, there's no government who's going to mm. aid you or assist you. Even family, everybody here is trying their best. So don't think that family can help you out. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure your plan is well thought. And if not, set certain things in place in order to just help you later on um, uh, during your uh, life. life journey. Yeah. So I think you, should, you two would have the best of both worlds. I don't think you should choose and just, just do be in both. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think why, that's the why best. Not, why not be in both worlds? I mean, yeah. Well, I think that's ultimately the dream, and um, possibly for you too. So you're, you have a house in Ghana, you have a house in Netherlands, yeah. and then if you can divide your time between the two, that'll I mean, be, that would be the, that'll right? be that's like the ultimate, ultimate dream. dream. Yeah. 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 And that you, you, that you, you can you live comfortably. Yes, yeah, the plan is yeah, to come back. So if you're going to come back, what are you going to do differently? Are you going to leave the kids there and come here? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wherever we go, our kids they go. go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what are you going to do differently? So now? everybody has to have that, 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 that space of we want to come. See, yeah. I think everybody loved to be here in Ghana, but yeah. at a certain point it was so draining for us not having the comfortability of a house. That I think was the most draining part. Yeah. We moved from a very big house to an apartment and the apartment was structured and well enough for everybody of us to live in. But Micah could not handle the apartment. Mm -hmm. He wanted to play and he went to run and he feels like I'm in school the whole day, confined and now you're telling me to sit in an apartment yeah. while we're in Africa and the sun is shining, he wants yeah. to run. Mm -hmm. So that was like something that we try to look for where everybody is comfortable. Yeah. And I think that um, we, we will only come back when we have the financial means to make sure everybody's comfortable. Because living in Ghana, the way that we want to live with a garden, and an outside space for them to play it is expensive. and the yeah. schools for them to be in yeah. it's expensive. is very yeah. expensive yeah, yeah. I, I feel like you're, you're listening ghana is very expensive <laughs> yeah, yeah it's expensive yeah. yeah i feel like um from for me being in ghana is the first time i've rented a place um of course if you don't have the means you you have to rent but i i, I really don't like it i i really don't like renting um you own to own a home yeah but it needs to make sense because um, in the end, if you're staying somewhere for 10 years or 20 years, it makes sense. If you're staying somewhere for one or two years, it doesn't make sense to build a house or to buy yeah. a house and then resell it. Or you have to really know how to sell things and know there's potential in it. But I don't feel comfortable in just paying the whole time for something while with our former house, the owner is not even really taking good care of it. And yeah. We, we have to take care, care of for everything. And I feel like then I'm just yeah. um, um, putting money just down the drain. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so if you're going to be going in and out, hopefully you come back after the year or two. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to buy a home here, isn't it the, the, the best choice rather? Yeah. Because you I'll know you'll come back. I'll build. I'll build. Yeah. I won't buy an, an The already. ideal situation that <laughs> it's, it's, we, we will find a place to build a home. Yeah. And that, that we have tried for the past year. But because we are confined to the kids' schools, yeah. we can only buy, or, or we could only buy land where we could live comfortably in East Legon. And that, that is like, East we Legon. can't afford. Woo. Jackpots. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so then, then, and it's then also you start something that we were not willing to pay. I think no. if we really tried, I mean, the loans now in the Netherlands are so low, we could really live there if we wanted to. But do we really want to invest that much money to live in East Legon just so that the kids can go to school? Mm -hmm. and my, my ideal place is not East Legon. I would love to live way up in the mountains in Abury, yeah. close to all greenery. Yep. But then <laughs> we're gonna be neighbors. <laughs> yeah. That would be so nice. The fact is that where am I going to put my kids into school? Yeah. And then the COVID really made us know that we are not teachers. We tried, but we cannot. I think we're great parents, but we're no teachers. We're teachers so in we a different way. Yeah. To, like the whole schooling, the whole schooling yeah. thing. Yeah. To be honest, no, that's yeah. that's not working. That's, that's like the big problem. here? I always worry he about math. Yes. I worry too. So, yes. so when, when her math came, like literally, I was struggling. Right. <laughs> oh my god! How I do not want to see it. I don't know this. I need my machine. I need my iPad oh, to wow. do this. Yeah. So it, it was sh it was shameful. But I think we've we've learned so much from this. We've grown so much from yeah. this experience that even if we don't come back, the experience alone has taught us a lot. A lot. Yeah. And I just yeah. hope that. What I missed in my childhood, to know who I am, to know where I come they from, to know there are people who look like me. 
I just hope that I instill that in them mm -hmm. and that they can face any type of situation that might come across them in Europe. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. I think, I think, we think, honestly, we should just wrap up here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> because nice. it was a good end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we should wrap up here. So, yeah, yeah I, I don't know, I don't even know how to um, end it. The video is done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Kwame Yosei's channel to keep on with all of the nice things going on going on in ghana see you the next one bye, bye. <laughs> Whew. that was nice yeah that was nice i'm sure it's like 45 minutes what the yeah, fuck it's very <laughs> yeah there's a lot to talk about that. yeah but so your camera doesn't overheat like nope